Mount Ararat. Mighty, mysterious, the majestic symbol of Armenia. Its twin peaks have captured man's imagination since the dawn of history. To onlookers, Ararat held a sacred majesty and grandeur, the symbol of God's deliverance after Noah's flood, a ladder to the wondrous mysteries of heaven. But in all those centuries, Ararat stood unexplored. No man had ever scaled it. None had dared challenge Ararat's 17,000-foot elevation to reach the summit. Not until a German scientist arrived in Armenia with a bold proposition. He was determined to climb Mount Ararat, and his expedition urgently needed a local guide. Friedrich Parod was a naturalist and professor in the Russian Empire. Ararat had been a spoil of victory for the Russians in the Russo-Persian Wars, and Parod obtained formal sanction from the Tsar to mount his expedition. Leading a group of scientists, he set out for Holy Etchmiadzin, the religious center of the Armenian Church, situated 30 miles from the Holy Mountain. The road from Russia to Etchmiadzin was treacherous. Plague raged in local villages throughout the Caucasus. Attacks on Christian travelers were common, but Pero and his team persisted and were rewarded with a welcome from Catholicos Yeprem I. The frail patriarch of the Armenian Church, 93 years of age, had reservations about the enterprise, but he honored Pero's request, assigning a young deacon to serve as the group's translator and guide. Deacon Khachatur Abovian had enrolled at Holy Etchmiadzin as a boy. He was fluent in Armenian, Russian, and Persian. But even more impressive to Parod was his zest for adventure. A burning eagerness to explore the unknown. On the eve of his 20th birthday, he traded the cozy cloisters of the monastery for the hazardous trek up Ararat. In September of 1829, Parod's group crossed the Araxes River and arrived at the Armenian village of Arhuri, perched on the lower slopes of Mount Ararat. Arhuri, tradition said, was where Noah planted the first vineyard after descending the mountain. Guided by Abovian, the expeditionary force continued to climb. Their next stop was the monastery of St. James. Surpakob in Armenian, where they established a base camp. They received a cool reception from the monastics, who begged Parot to abandon his effort. From the time of Noah's flood, they warned, divine decree had forbidden mortals from climbing Ararat. As evidence, they cited the monastery's namesake, St. James of Nisibis, a monk who had tried unsuccessfully to climb Ararat in the early years of Armenian Christianity. Asleep on the mountainside, the saint had received a vision of an angel who declared the summit was unattainable, but presented James with a fragment of Noah's Ark in compensation. Parot took these warnings in stride. He was a man of faith, but he also had faith that his research and preparation would ensure a successful climb. It would take the mountaineers three attempts to reach the summit. Parot recorded the physical travail they experienced. Our bed was the hard rock, he wrote, and the cold, icy head of the mountain, our only stove. They carried a wooden cross with them on their second attempt. A gathering storm made it impossible to reach the summit that day, but Pato insisted on erecting the cross at the highest point they had reached so far. They planted it in the ice facing Yerevan. On their third hike up the mountain, the group took a smaller cross. It was early fall, and the Armenian church was marking the season of the Holy Cross. Abovian, observing a strict fast, ate only bread on the steep ascent. At last, the cross erected on the previous climb came into view. It was a sign that they were near the very top and the men pressed on. 
Abovian broke a hole in the ice and into it lowered the base of the second wooden cross, knowing it would be visible to the residents of the little village of Ahuri, the St. James Monastery, and the entire plain stretching below the mighty mountain. At the highest elevation, almost 17,000 feet, Pato and his men bowed their heads in remembrance of Noah and in thanks to God. At the summit, Abovian had hewed out a large chunk of ice, which he carried with him on his descent. Later, when he was summoned to Etchmiadzin, the ice of Ararat had melted, but he made gifts of its holy water to the monastics around him. He later reported to Pado that some tasted it, others sprinkled themselves or wetted their faces with it, all looked upon it as a rarity of the highest value. The expedition to Ararat changed Abovian's life. He enrolled at Padot's university and went on to a career of literary distinction. Years later, Abovian climbed Ararat a second time. By then, both the village of Ahuri and St. James Monastery were gone, destroyed by an earthquake. But the impressions of that first journey never left him. His prose masterpiece, Wounds of Armenia, evokes Ararat with a tenderness and longing familiar to many Armenians. In Abovian's novel, Ararat is a testament to the greatness of his homeland, a reminder of his countrymen's abiding Christian faith, a throwback to mankind's youth. He had been warned that scaling Ararat would invite divine anger. Instead, what Abovian discovered on the holy mountain was a deeper wonder for the mysteries of God.